Now, Democratic Congressman Ro Khanna of California, he represents Silicon Valley, which as of now is still where uh, Twitter is. <laughs> we'll, we'll see, right? Okay, so um, this Twitter account tracking the jet, this is one account. And I, and I actually want to start here a little bit bigger than that one account, but I do want to ask you about that. But first, just the bigger picture. Are you concerned about what this means for what Twitter under Elon Musk will look like? That he's now realizing he has the power. He's the god of Twitter. He can decide every account here and there and who gets to speak and who doesn't. Yes, I am concerned. I mean, he gets to make the rules and uh, it doesn't seem consistent. I mean, look, I've been defending the idea of free speech and that we shouldn't have censored the New York Post, but you can't then censor someone who's tracking private flights. So I hope they'll reconsider it. But the bigger issue is there has to be some independent body. There can't be just Elon Musk making the decisions of which account to suspend and which account to have on. Right. I mean, that's the thing. They've come out with, you know, all of these revelations, they say, about who was deciding what at Twitter. And maybe there were some mistakes, imperfections, right. But at least there was a system you could kind of go through and look at it in retrospect, as opposed to just one person's brain and what they want to do. Now, on the Elon jet, right? So there's the, the last tweet before that account was suspended showed Musk's jet taking off from Oakland on Monday, leading landing in Los Angeles 48 minutes later. Uh, another day, he flagged the jet taking off from Reno, uh, flagging that it's heading to Oakland. This is very detailed. So everywhere Elon goes was on Twitter. Um, he ran accounts like Bezos Jets. Um, we know who that was tracking. Celeb Jets, other celebrities right. where they were going. Um, okay, Sweeney says this is all publicly available. Yep. But publicly available is different from easily accessible. So does it cross a line or does Elon have a point that putting his private jet in everywhere it goes, that he's changed his mind and says that's a threat? Well, look, they put out my personal email address, so I... Well, that's I, true. They did, they did not. <laughs> you know, so I don't think they've been that sensitive to personal information. But I think that if you're going to believe in the First Amendment principles, you've got to be consistent. And having public information out there, as long as it's not an imminent threat to safety, uh, should be on there. Now, if he is saying, uh, go uh, take some action against uh, Elon Musk or someone, that's different. That's a threat right. to safety. And I would agree that that shouldn't be on there. But then I just read... Uh, Look, this uh, becoming before coming on the show. Aaron Ruper is, has been banned. Aaron Ruper criticizes me all the time. He takes my uh, clips and distorts them. Right? Yeah, uh, but, I follow him. But you know, I mean, you can't ban that. I mean, I and so I think this what this whole Twitter files is showing is that we don't have thoughtful uh, decision making, and we have concentration of power in who's deciding what is speech. Right. And also, I think one thing it's also showing is there are no easy answers. It's easy to say, I don't like how it's done. It's different to actually have to do it yourself and to take that mantle on. Now, one thing that Musk has been doing, though, is tweeting things that are uh, um, they are they are things that are recognized by the QAnon community, okay? And it's unclear why he's doing it or the context in which he's doing it. But the white rabbit, I don't know if you saw this week, he tweeted follow and then the little picture of a white rabbit. Uh, now, I admit I first saw that and was thinking, what the heck is this? Well, the white rabbit has been linked to the QAnon movement uh, over the past four years, and QAnon forums immediately picked this up. Uh, he's dismissed these allegations uh, and said it was about something else. Uh, but a journalist who's an expert on QAnon that I talked to, Mike Rothschild, he says QAnon followers clearly saw this as tipping the hat. Look, Elon gets us. He's with us. What do you think about stuff like that? Well, I don't, I don't know why he's doing that. I mean, look, this is someone who actually has innovated with Tesla. He's innovated with SpaceX. Why he's getting... Uh, in back and forths on QAnon and suspending accounts on Twitter. I mean, it seems a total waste of time. He should not be making the decisions on this. And it's concerning. I mean, it's concerning uh, that he's putting this stuff out there. The tweet about Fauci and prosecuting Fauci. Right. I mean, whatever. Look, it's one thing to say, okay, he has My the first... pronouns prosecute Fauci, you, right? Yeah, I mean, it's one thing to say that you have the First Amendment right, but when you are uh, one of the world's leading innovators, you also have some responsibility. And I just don't think it's becoming. It's not a good look for him. And I tell him that on, in person. Right. And you're telling him, telling him <laughs> now. Uh, and obviously you are the, the congressperson who represents his district. Rokana, thank you very much.